Welcome to All Is Not Lost with Rianne Maldonado. The other day I was lamenting about something in the living room with the family. I don't know, something about my mediumship or this podcast. I, I don't even remember. When my brilliant son, who usually talks me off the ledge, said, Mom, the raft is not the shore. And I was like, what? What the heck does that mean? And he launched into this really beautiful explanation of what basically ended up being my journey into mediumship and him reminding me about all the tools and teachers and stepping stones I've taken on my journey for the last seven and a half years to get where I am today. And I was like swept away. I thought, oh my God, this is brilliant. This is totally what I needed to hear at this moment. The raft is not the shore, the shore being mediumship for me and the raft being all the things that I thought I needed or that I have used in the past to get me where I am today. And my son was trying to make me realize I don't need all the things I used to need or that I thought I needed. I'm there. I've arrived at the shore. And it touched me so much. And I understand that this is a book. Uh, the raft is not the shore is not unique to my son. Um, it's, it's a famous book. It, it didn't matter at the time. The point was it spoke to me and I decided that it would be very important. I thought to share with some of you that your journey is going to grow and evolve and change, and you're going to use different things and have different teachers and all of that is good. All of that is okay. But you, if it's your goal, you may not need all that stuff in the end. You might get to a point where you can just do what it is you want to do. And so I hope you enjoyed today's episode where I kind of explain my journey and what the raft was for me and what the shore is for me, and that you can take something from it and help you along your journey. And if you are enjoying all is not lost and the things I talk about and the guests I have on here, tell a friend, um, maybe they could benefit from it too. And I would appreciate that. Settle in and enjoy today's episode. Spirit, does it stay? Does it go? The fact is, spirit does survive death. Our loved ones are all around us. Love survives. Spirit survives. All is not lost. Welcome to the All is Not Lost podcast. Here's your host, psychic and evidential medium, Rianne Maldonado. Way back in the beginning of my journey, I used to be terrified of giving a phone reading. I had flashbacks of when I was a kid and I'd be staying at my grandparents' house and there'd be those commercials on TV with the 1-800-DIAL-A-PSYCHIC um, commercials coming on. And I would think to myself, even back then, how could somebody across the country or even across the world over the phone tell anything about you accurately? And it stuck with me for most of my life. Then when I started really developing my mediumship, I was forced to do an online reading for the first time. I was pleasantly surprised that it worked. <laughs> I mean, I'm not afraid to admit that. I, I want to be very real with, with my journey for people to understand that I was a skeptic a lot of the time and I didn't understand how things work. I was also afraid of how I would be able to do mediumship without certain tools. And what I mean by that, the title of this episode, the raft is not the shore is really important to me because sometimes I have found not just for myself, but people I've worked with that we sometimes get caught up in thinking that we need certain tools or rituals or teachers to enable us to be able to get to the point where we want to be. And by that, I mean, in this instance, mediumship by being able to speak to spirit. That's what I want to dive into today to talk about tools, why we use them, why they're important, but how eventually we can absolutely learn to work without them. So I want to start by saying 
this isn't for the people who are born right out of the womb, (laughs) seeing spirit, talking to spirit, lucky them. That wasn't my case. I'm talking more about people who have similar experiences to mine, where we either discovered our gifts later in life or through a traumatic experience or something like that. Not where it was just right there from the get go. Because for those of us who have a journey similar to mine, it really is a journey of unfoldment, a journey of change, a journey of growth. And we have to honor each of those steps. And our steps all might be different. I'm going to share with you my take, my steps, what what it was like for me, and how I got from a place of fear and a place of needing tools to where I am today, where I can just pick up the phone know nothing about the person on the other end of the line, except their first name and give them an accurate reading. Um, and it's been a long journey to get to that point and a lot of practice, but that's ultimately where I wanted to be. So when I say the raft is not the shore, the shore to me is mediumship without the use of tools or handholding, anything like that. And for those of you, or even me once in a while, who still want to use your tools, that's okay. I'm not here bashing or putting down the use of tools. It was a personal goal for me though, to get to where I didn't need them. So sometimes we really get caught up in using the things to get to the other thing. It's easy to get into that place. We get caught up thinking that we need certain tools or rituals to get us to the point where we want to be. We also think we can't get there without a certain teacher. It's often common that we latch on to a particular teacher or guru and everything they say is everything to us at the moment. And, you know, that's considered a tool in my mind, but an important one that that we need. I'm just, again, talking about how we can move from a place of needing, say, a pendulum or oracle or tarot cards or a specific teacher. Um, Sometimes we can get too connected to the guru. You think you can only do the thing while working with or following your guru, which isn't true. So basically your journey is a road of discovery and expansion and growth. I never want you to look back and think, negatively about the tools or the things you might've used before or the methods in which you worked before. Cause I kind of went through that and I'll be honest. Um, I went through that a little bit looking back at how my journey unfolded until one day I realized that I needed those steps to get where I am. And that's totally okay. I had to kind of give myself a, a wake up call and permission to understand that those were necessary. The tools and teachers cannot become more important than the gift of mediumship itself. The raft cannot become more important than the shore. The example I can give you is if some of you have heard my story about how I got started, uh, and especially in my episode with medium Brittany Selly, you'll know that when she first <laughs> opened her beautiful little velvet pouch of tarot cards in my living room way back in 2015. I was uneasy. I was very uncomfortable. I knew nothing about tarot except what I had seen on TV or heard about around, you know, so I had no knowledge other than negative and scary stuff. So that, that was new to me. My first tool that I had ever used was a pendulum and Oracle cards. Because at that point, I was still too scared to touch tarot cards. I didn't know if it was true that they would open a portal to something or conjure something as I had been led to believe. But I felt safe with oracle cards and I felt safe with a pendulum. I didn't know why. I didn't really know what I was doing, but I knew that those were more comfortable for me. And so I kind of started out dabbling with my oracle cards, angel cards, things like that, that were more positive and lots of light and lots of love, nothing scary, no scary cards, basically no negative cards. And then I progressed after a couple of years where I learned more. I read more. I learned from some different teachers 
and I felt more comfortable that I could approach tarot. I found teachers that felt like they were working with tarot, quote, in the light and weren't doing anything that made me uncomfortable. I started to study tarot very in depth. I not only memorized many, many, many written meanings of the cards, but I also really started to practice using my own intuition. I had learned something simple in the beginning that was wonderful. Um, basically just learning the basic numbers one through 10 and the suits of the cards. And by that, I was able to combine them and add in my intuition and basically give a reading. I started doing tarot frequently, got more comfortable with it, reading for friends and family, started giving free readings to people. And then I started actually really getting good feedback. So that's when I became a professional tarot reader and advertised as such. And I would read all over town at events, fairs and markets and things like that. And I, and I was very comfortable. I loved what I was doing. Tarot was very important to me. And I brought my cards with me every, every place I went. And I mean, everywhere I went, they were with me always because I found them to be a very useful tool for drawing out what it was I was really feeling or needing at the time. Our mind gets in the way, our subconscious gets in the way, and we go back and forth and back and forth. I don't know. What should I do? What should I do? Well, the cards, kind of like a pendulum, when you use them appropriately, they will help you actually see what you really, really want or desire or need. I used to give this kind of silly analogy. Have you ever flipped a coin? When it lands on the one you didn't want, you're like, oh man, I didn't really want that one. You think you wanted you know, A or B, you wanted A, but say it lands on A and you're like, ah, oh, actually, maybe I don't really want it. The coin didn't do anything, but make you go, wait a minute, this is actually what I really want. Well, the cards were the same for me. You know, I would look at a card and it would give me an answer and I would either know right inside in my gut. Yes, that's, that's true. Or no, not really. And that's an example of a tool. I progressed then even from tarot. I had an office here in Tucson and I would offer tarot readings, but I also offered Reiki. I became a Reiki master during this time as well. And I loved doing Reiki for people. I live a very stressful life. I have a big family. I'm busy all the time. And for me, Reiki was not only helping the client, but for me, forcing me to sit down in silence in a beautiful space, healing another person forced me to sit quietly with my own thoughts and clear my mind. And so Reiki was very, very good for me. I started to get to a point where I no longer wanted to read tarot for people. I started to feel really kind of negative about it. Not negative, like, you know, dark and demons and stuff. Negative that it was no longer providing the service that I had originally intended for it to provide. And I noticed that clients were coming back repeatedly asking the same questions and they weren't using the advice that they were given through the cards, even though it was very, very clear that that's what they needed to do. I also found that I seemed to get clients who would use the cards or psychic readings as kind of a crutch. I hate to say it like that, but really where they got to where they couldn't make their own decisions. Um, I think it takes a lot of responsibility off our shoulders if we never make a decision on our own and we only say, oh, well, my psychic told me to do this or the cards told me to do that. We still have free will. We still have to make choices. And so for some reason, I, I'm now I see the universe was just bringing me a different way. I really started to get where I didn't want to read tarot and I stopped going to fairs and events. And I stopped advertising for a while. I needed to take a break and I focused more on the Reiki. Strange and wonderful things began to happen. And this is where I knew that my journey was shifting again. During the time that I was working just doing Reiki is when I was studying more the unfoldment of my mediumship. I was taking more classes online, reading more books, um, giving practice readings with other mediums. And that's what I was doing in my spare time in between my Reiki clients, I would notice that I would start seeing images or hearing words in my mind when I was doing a Reiki session. I would sense presences or get messages. And when I would come out of the session, 
I would never volunteer this information, but if a client would ask, did you pick up anything during my session? You know, then I would tell them. And there was this one time in particular that just blew, blew my mind. I was working on this woman and I started to smell the most luscious pine trees. It was like I was in the biggest pine forest and the trees smelled so beautiful, just like Christmas time. And I, it's hilarious because there I was in my own Reiki room. I decorated it. It was in my office, but I opened my eyes and I'm looking around the room as if I'm going to like see a pine tree, right? No pine tree. Um, but the smell was so strong. I couldn't put it out of my mind. And when I came out of this session and the client asked me if I had sensed anything, I said something like, you know, this is going to sound nuts, but I smelled pine trees very, very strongly while I was working on you. And, you know, I'm, I just took a guess. I said, I'm not sure if that means you're supposed to go spend some time in nature this week or, you know, in the mountains, I don't know, take, take it and do with it what you will. But that's what I picked up. Well, that night I went to the movies with my family and I went to turn my phone down for the movie. And I saw a text from that same client and I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I think I, I made some sound out loud because I was shocked. She told me that when she got home from seeing me that night, her fiance had gone to the store to buy things for dinner and he had picked up a balsam pine candle and it was burning on the kitchen table when she got home. Hello, that was freaking nuts. I'm like, wow. Okay. I don't know why I got that. And it wasn't like it was super meaningful or anything, but for whatever reason, my point is I started getting messages when I was doing Reiki. And this is also the point when, um, right before I gave up tarot, I was doing a reading for a stranger, just a woman who had found me online. And she was talking about wanting to read cards for her two sons. You know, she, well, she said, I'm not worried about this one son, but this other son I'm concerned about. And I'd like to know about this and this and this in his life. And so I pulled the cards out and then something stopped me because in my brain, I heard the name Matthew and paused for a minute. And I, cause I had never heard it quite like that. And I said, is your son's name Matthew. And she said, Nope, that's the other son. I go, Nope, these cards are for him because when I pulled these cards, I got the name Matthew. So we're supposed to read these particular cards for that son. And it ended up being a brilliant reading. When we went over it all, she was just floored and left excited to call her son Matthew. So again, the tools were changing, the tools were starting to bring me different information. And I was moving from certain tools to new tools. That's what I'm trying to stress here today is those steps matter. And for a while, I was so turned off of tarot. I probably have a hundred decks of tarot cards. For a while, I didn't want to look at them. I didn't open them. I didn't touch them. I wanted nothing to do with them. I felt like, ugh, that's nonsense. I don't want anything to do with that anymore. I'm not going to deal with tarot anymore. And I would kind of, for a moment, be a little ashamed that I used to be a professional tarot reader. That has since changed. Obviously, that's what I'm here to talk about today. Those steps that we go through in the beginning, we can't look back and think, ugh, I didn't need that. Why did I do that? Because that was part of getting you where you are today. After starting to notice that I was getting messages during Reiki client sessions, I was like, wow, um, okay, this is pretty cool. And that's when I started branching out to do more very specific mediumship only readings. This was during the time of COVID in the very, very, very beginning. And we first had to shut down the office and I couldn't see Reiki clients anymore. And I turned to doing mediumship readings on Zoom. I really enjoyed that. That's what got me going was doing these readings every week. I would book three or four or five readings a week. And I would really enjoy connecting with the people, connecting with spirit. I felt I was doing something important. I could look back at all those previous things I had done, the tools, the teachers and things like that, and appreciate where I was now. It's also important to talk about here, teachers or gurus again, and get into that a little bit deeper, like we did with the tools. Teachers can be a really good or a really bad thing. And I'm not talking about teachers that are just bad teachers. They teach you bad stuff or they are no good at teaching. I mean, our reliance upon them. 
finding a teacher you mesh with that you really enjoy learning from is very important. And you'll know in your gut right away. There are some teachers that I started with online or by reading their books that I really felt hit home. The very, very first psychic teacher I ever had was Sonia Choquette. Her books and her oracle cards made me feel safe and comfortable. Then I moved on to John Holland. He made me feel safe and comfortable. And I was absorbing every single thing John would put out. I would go see him at seminars. I would buy every single book he had. I would buy his decks of cards. Uh, I would do online classes. Whatever I could do that John offered, I would do. And then there came a day when I started noticing that, and this is nothing bad about John Holland. I love him. It's This is about my journey. I started noticing that he was teaching the same things he had already taught me. So I had outgrown my teacher. That is a positive thing. He was in my journey for a reason. And I grew beyond what he could give me. And it was time to find somebody new. And I believe that's when I went on to um, have a mentorship with Suzanne Wilson here in Arizona, the carefree medium she's called, and did a very small six-person mentorship course with her over the course of three or four or five months, um, which challenged me even more. She made me do things I hadn't done before. She had me practice skills I had never been taught before. I grew and learned more. And then that mentorship ended and it was time to grow again and find a new teacher. And it just progressed from there. I've learned from a lot of people. I've trained it with mediums from England. I've gone to England and trained with mediums there, which was a huge step. I remember it was a year ago that I saw an opportunity to go train with a particular medium in England that I had taken an online course from, and I really, really liked her. I immediately signed up for her course, not sure whether I would get to go or not. I mean, the chances of me getting to go to England at that time were crazy, but I took a chance. And it was interesting because at that time, I looked back at a journal that I keep about things I want to manifest, things I want to do in my life, kind of like a wish journal. And I was reading through there and I had forgotten that almost four years prior, I had written in that journal, I want to train in England for mediumship. And oh my gosh. So it took a really long time. It took four years, but there it was. There was my chance, which was phenomenal and totally stretched me beyond my wildest dreams. I mean, going to another country for the first time in my entire life, going completely alone, and then standing up in front of a room of 35 total strangers as the only American and de delivering a mediumship message to the group was terrifying. On my last trip there, I was asked to deliver a reading at a church service, a spiritualist church service. And I'm certain my hand, I had a glass of water in my hand and it was literally shaking like in the cartoons. I, I had to have somebody help me set my water down. I was so terrified to stand up in front of these people at their church service and deliver a message. But my point is growth. I could never in a million years have stood up like I did in England in front of strangers and deliver a reading five years ago. I wasn't ready. I needed all the teachers. I needed all the tools. I needed all the steps that led me to be able to do that. And then after England, I had the opportunity to go to Lilydale, New York and practice my mediumship there. And I, I remember thinking, oh my gosh, I have been studying so long and with so many people I was mind blown that there was more to learn. I mean, I know that sounds crazy on one side because we're always learning. My, you know, my rational brain knew that. But the other side of me was just amazed that I had an opportunity to work with a completely different teacher, learn things I'd still never learned before. And she tested our limits. One particular test was torturous, but wonderful in the end. We had to read for each other as students one on one. And we were, not allowed to give positive feedback. We had to actually say no to everything they said to us, even if it was true. And I felt sick inside. We, we all did. It was a horrible experience, but it was wonderful in the end. Um, it was to teach us ultimately to give a reading independent of the client's feedback. So again, the feedback could be looked at as a tool that is necessary to our success if we let it. 
What she was teaching was stop being dependent on the feedback. You need to trust spirit and give the information regardless of what the person is saying or their body language or whatever, because you know that spirit is not going to make a mistake. And from that experience, I grew again. I just love the understanding and sharing the understanding that when we say the raft is not the shore, the raft is important. We cannot get to the shore without the raft, but eventually we need to abandon the raft because we've made it to the shore. We no longer need the raft. We no longer need the cards or the pendulum or the guru that we thought we couldn't survive without. Now, I'm not saying ditch them completely or you can never use them or you're not a good medium if you use them. That's not at all what I'm saying. But if your goal is to get to the point of pure mediumship without the use of any tools, then you need to get to the point where you can work without them. But if it's a choice, if you love working with the cards, that's your baby. And you're like, I talk to spirit, but I also use my cards and it's a combined type of reading. Great. That's wonderful. And I support that for me because I got that bad taste in my mouth about tarot for whatever reason. I don't know. Did the universe send me that? Maybe. I don't know. I wanted to go this other route. But recently I was asked to do an event and it had been a long time since I had done an event and I was a little bit nervous. And I remember asking one of my newer teachers, like, what if I stumble? What if I'm a little bit nervous and nothing comes out? And she's like, well, bring your cards, pull one out and look at it and see what comes pops into your head and go from there. Like, it's okay to have your tools with you. And I remember the moment that gave me comfort thinking, oh, okay, I could bring a deck of cards with me and sure, maybe it'll get me over the hump. But what was beautiful is when I got to the event and I did one of the first readings, the reading was perfect. And just my heart overflowed. The client was crying, happy tears. I felt so much love and I never needed to touch the cards. I actually forgot I had them with me and I just started giving her the reading and it was beautiful. Spirit did such a great job. So it kind of taught me for me personally that, look, Rianne, you did just fine without the tools. You don't, you don't need your tools. It's okay. So if you want to get to that point, it's possible. It's possible for everybody to get to that point. I'd also like to talk a little bit about the different tools and where the information comes from. I get asked that a lot. Like, where do you get the information from? Well, I'm sure you could read a million books or look online and find all kinds of information on this. I'm just going to give you my understanding, my take. When I use, for example, a pendulum, a pendulum is usually yes, no, or maybe type answers. That's the only kind of question that you can ask. And you usually set which one is yes or no by asking, you know, a true question like, is my name Rianne? Well, if it swings left and right, well, you know, that's your yes. So anything that swings otherwise up and down would be a no. When using a pendulum, I really think that this information is coming, you know, is it coming from the collective consciousness, the Akashic records, you know, the great database in the sky? Yes, probably. It's also being influenced by your biases and your unconscious, true desires and needs. Again, like the coin toss, we're talking about what it is that you really want or need, but all the noise in your brain is making it hard to find out. So you use your pendulum and it really helps you zero in on what it is really going on in your mind. But I think it's also influenced by all the other experiences every single person has ever had pulling from that collective consciousness mixed in with what we need and desire at the time. Those two things go hand in hand because we tap into what's out there, what everyone else has ever thought, dreamed, experienced, and we tap into that and we add it to our own needs and desires, whether we know it or not. When using a tool like the pendulum, I think the information is coming from yourself, but also your highest self, which is part of this collective consciousness. Now, I think it changes a little bit when we switch to tarot cards, oracle cards, and other kinds of things like that, because now you're using some imagery, some numbers, some, you know, numerology, and kind of a, a set structure of things. But now you're starting to put your own intuition into it. 
So, you know, if you look at the, say, the death card in tarot, everyone's like scared of the death card if they don't know tarot. Well, if you start interpreting that with your intuition based upon the question you've asked or your client has asked, you'll start to see other things, other meanings in there. For example, if the person is in a relationship and you pull the death card, well, I would have to tell my clients that is not literal death. You're not going to drop dead tomorrow. Neither is your partner. It might be the death of the relationship. It might be the death of you feeling bad about yourself or anything like that. Your intuition kicks in. So I think in the case of cards, now we're tapping into that collective consciousness again, but we're adding to it our intuition, our own intuitive hits, our psychic hits, and making it even better, more full and rich than a single yes or no answer with the, with the pendulum. Now, when we shift from cards and using imagery and intuition and the collective consciousness to gain the information that we're seeking, we shift into, oh, and let me add that that would include psychic readings. If I'm sitting across from you, I'm not using any tools and I'm not talking to your deceased grandmother. I'm reading you, your aura, your situation that you're in, your feelings. That information is also coming from intuition and the collective consciousness and you. It's a combined effort. But when we shift into mediumship, that information, in my opinion and my experience, is coming directly from the deceased person in spirit. There's no added fluff. There's no added anything. It's truly a conversation as if that person is sitting on my left side. My spirits always show up on my left side. So when I'm having a conversation in my mind, you know, telepathically with this spirit, or they're showing me images or words, it is directly from them to me and back from me to them. We're not adding anything. So that information is coming straight from the spirit. And that's coming through symbols and words and colors and feelings. And in mediumship, you actually will start to develop your own symbols. Spirits will show you, begin to show you over time what certain things mean. I think an example once that maybe it was John Holland gave was, okay, if you see an apple in your mind when you're doing a reading, it could be for somebody, it could mean teacher. Oh, my mom was a teacher. That's my mom. For somebody else, that could mean New York. If you see a rose, oh, my mother's name was Rose or no, my grandmother had a rose garden. It's going to be different for every medium. It's going to be different for every client. So as a medium, you start to develop your own set of symbols. You kind of develop your own little language with the spirit. For example, it took me a couple of years to learn this because I had to see it from enough spirits during readings. If a spirit will not show me their face, if they turn their back to me, it's usually guilt. They feel guilty about something and they're there to apologize. It's very, very, very clear to me. The very first time that happened, I couldn't understand yet because I didn't have this database in my mind yet of what spirit's trying to tell me. It took me a while to understand why he turned his back halfway through the reading and wouldn't look at me. And eventually I was hearing the words that he had basically cheated on his family. I'm not going to say exactly what happened because of confidentiality, but he was not wanting to show me his face. He hung his head and turned away from me to show that he felt guilt and remorse. And this was combined with, I felt sick in my stomach as if I had done something terrible to somebody. So I made mental note of that. I wrote it in my journal that I had had this experience. And then fast forward a couple of years later, and I'm reading for a really good friend of the family and his brother comes through and his brother is standing with his back to me and he just won't turn around. I got that feeling again, that sinking feeling of guilt and shame and remorse. And when I confirmed it with my friend afterwards, what had happened between the two of them, him and his brother, it made sense that his brother would be ashamed and would be apologizing. So over time, you can develop this language with your, your mediumship. 
and what these symbols mean to you and to spirit. So if a spirit shows you a symbol, a color or a sign or whatever it is, you'll begin to know that that means one particular thing for you, one or two, you know, usually it can mean a couple of things, but, but you'll get an understanding. I can't end without bringing this up because this was really important. A couple of years ago, I wrote a blog post about this kind of back to the phone readings. I used to think there is no way I could ever do a phone reading. I was so nervous. I just, I thought doing a Zoom reading was amazing, that I didn't even have to be in the same room with a person. I could be seeing them on a screen and deliver a very thorough message for them, meaningful and helpful, that I couldn't fathom that I could do that on the phone. And there came a point when I kind of was forced to, I mean, I guess they could have said no, but I work with somebody in a business capacity. And while I was working with her, a spirit came through and I asked her if I could share this with her. Cause I, I knew her also kind of personally and she allowed me to. And, and she said, Oh, I know who that's for. I would like to get this person a reading as a gift because that spirit is definitely for this particular family member of mine. And I said, okay. And so we arranged it, but the family member was across the country. I didn't know where I just knew that she was across the country somewhere. And so we set up the phone appointment and I'm, <sighs> I can't begin to tell you how terrified I was, not quite as terrified as I was going to England (laughs) um, and standing up there. But I was pretty darn scared because I was worried I would let my client down. I was worried that there's no way I could give her what she needed over the phone. I just hadn't seen it done in a way that convinced me. But anyway, took a deep breath, asked spirit to come in and guide me and dialed the phone. And it ended up being an absolutely beautiful reading. She later wrote me an email and said it was the best Christmas gift she'd ever received in her entire life. And that was just, there's no words for that. Because what that showed me back to the the whole beginning of why we're having this conversation is I no longer needed the raft. I was at the shore. I had made it. I was able to do a mediumship reading without any tools. If I could do this reading only knowing a person's first name and not even knowing where in the country they were and just being on the phone line with them and give them the best gift of their life, I felt I had made it to that shore and I no longer needed the raft. What I'd love for you to take from this today is everybody's journey is going to be different. You do not need to compare yourself to anybody else on a similar journey. You can take what you need and leave the rest behind. And please accept and honor the stages that you have gone through to get where you are today. And also know that if you're not quite where you want to be today, you can still get there. You'll find the next teacher that's going to help you expand. You'll try a different tool. You'll read a new book, which could be a tool. You'll, you'll find these things once you're ready. They'll come to you and you'll just keep growing from there. And whatever your goal is today, please be gentle with yourself because it might change. I truly thought four or five years ago, I wanted to just read tarot every day for the rest of my life. I wanted to read cards for the whole world. Now that's not my goal anymore. It was a stepping stone. And what I'm doing now, reading for spirit, for people here who need to hear from their loved ones on the other side is the ultimate gift. I don't ever want to stop doing this. And I'm grateful for I am. But that means I also have to look back and be grateful for where I've been. So that said, enjoy your journey and please understand the difference between the raft and the shore. The raft will get you to the shore. The raft will change, but eventually you won't need the raft. Mm -hmm.